dealing with, you know, you might have this on your notes, but I want to kind of go over this again, dealing with social justice, social development, and the whole impact of philosophy of racial justice, and we talked about this, destroying racial domination, social development, communal, social, and institutional well-being, strategy to improve society through economic growth and individual flourishing. We, we had already went over this, but I just want to kind of recap, okay? And then some. <laughs> and then the thing about aspects. Know these, learn these, understand it. If you want to, put a TQ in your notes because you're going to see it again. We talked about the aspects of social development. We went over the first four, and there's two more that we're going to get to. We talked about the economic, so, 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 excuse me, society's economic growth as um, opposed to economic stagnation or recession, the physical, the health and well-being of uh, society and the individual, and then the cultural. All members of society learn about the contributions and perspectives of other members that are considered considerable and valuable. Now, there's some challenges there, okay, because sometimes we don't have that in society. And the whole thing about moral, individuals within the social system practice social justice. Really. Respect human dignity, really, and support policies that benefit all members of society. Do we have this in society? What's your name? I told you. I'm Khalif. Hey, Khalif, how you doing? All right, do we have this in society? I don't think so. Vanessa, do we have it in society? Did you hear what Vanessa said? <laughs> she didn't hear. Do we have this in society, Vanessa? No, Thank you. Okay. Steph, do we have this in society? Can I have anyone in this class that agree with me that they, we, we have this in society? Eric, what about you? Let me take a look at it. Okay, let's look at it. Number four, we're talking about the moral. Human dignity and support policies that benefit all members of society. No. Nobody. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Okay. Let's get to the two that we have not discussed. We have about the cultural, we talk about the physical, we talk about the moral. Know those, learn those, understand them, because you're going to see them again. Okay. Okay. The interpersonal and the political. The cooperation between individuals is practice which allows teamwork to be the foundation for impacting decisions in the community. It's supposed to be impacted. And then the political. When the political system in the country meets the needs, the political system, people always tell me they hate politics. Why do you hate politics? Everything is political. I don't understand that individual can sit back and say they hate politics. Even within your family is political. Every decision that's made in your family is political. It could be a wedding, it could be a funeral, it could be a birthday party, everything is political. It's either racial, political, or both. It's like people say they hate history. How are you going to hate what you make? People hate man. That blows my mind because people like spending money, and that's mad. I just don't understand it. Okay? Political. When the political system in the country meets the needs of the people, for them, does it meet the needs of the people? No. No. Is it justice and liberty for all the young lady from Reno, Nevada? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. What about our dear brother, our Marine, Mr. Palmer? No. <laughs> I can just pretty much say no. Just say no. That's a campaign slogan from the 1980s. Dealing with the Trump. Just say no. Political. Everything is political. Liberty, justice for all. Policies that ensure the justice and liberty and the security. What is the security? What do we say? We have to protect national security. What? National security. Really? In the name of national security. <laughs> <laughs> the government. <laughs> it's 
for national security. <laughs> All national security is important. Excuse me, Mr. Justin. <laughs> we can have fun dealing with this. It's real talk. It is. So we have these. We got these. Know these, learn these, understand them because we don't see it again. Okay. All right, let's rock and roll. It's showtime. We talk about undoing some racism. <laughs> One of the ills in America is isms. Racism is one of them, and we have to destroy it. What time is the game? Okay. Let's take a second that she's got it for me. Addressing how white racism is entrenched in America and engaging in social justice work. Know these three, understand them, let them marinate, because you're going to see it again. Let it marinate. Okay, the vision. You have to understand the vision. You have to be able to visualize this, to understand it. If you don't understand it, you will be crushed. It's about winning time, folks. Understanding oppression. A lot of times, stuff people don't understand oppression. They don't. When, when, when you hear Tay say, what time is the game? She's letting you know that that issue is not important to people because it hasn't came down the street yet. So you have to understand the oppression. You have to understand how people are being oppressed. And people think that if it happens over here, since I don't live in Mississippi or Alabama, or I don't live in um, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, then that's not my problem. Oh, uh, yes it is. There's a thing called, for the Michigan, you're talking about the wall, right? Say, did you get an email from me? Yeah, it's closer. It's closer. It's here in Arizona, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, you got the same email. Yes. Flint is Michigan. That's 2,000 miles away. Three time zones. It's out in here. You have to understand what's, what's going on here, ladies and gentlemen. Strategic action. And then, originalness. I want, you to, I want you to know this term, okay, because there's going to be another Supreme Court nominee nominated within the next two years, okay, because somebody's going to be tired. And they're going to say, is this person originalist? Because see, they used that for Justice, John, Justice um, Gorsuch that just um, got on the bench, 45th president's nominee. And they say he's originalist. Now, what does that mean? That means that they believe in the original document of the Constitution before the amendments. Before the amendments. I want you to, I'm going to let that marinate. Before the amendments. Certain members of the society were only one or two thirds of the human being. See, that's powerful, folks. Call language. And then this thing here. Anti-racism challenges the assumed hierarchy of privileges. We have individuals in this society that don't believe they have privilege. Okay? I don't have privilege. I work hard for everything I've got. It. Really? You really have? Oh, really though? Sure. Privileges such as knowledge, status, values, and competence. Privilege. Hold it. About 10 seconds and count. Privilege. Okay. Anti racism. It is a battle when you are considered an anti racist person, you are a fighter because you're going up against a structure, folks. It is not easy to battle racists because they come at you at all different angles and they're sophisticated with their reasons and they use other people to 
to say the things they don't want to say. It is tough, folks, to deal with this. Everybody have this? No, no. Okay. No. All right. <laughs> See, if you are of a certain gender, of a certain race, ethnicity, you are not supposed to discuss issues of race. Why are you bringing it up? That, you're not part of that group that's being victimized. Yeah, but I, I, I believe in mankind. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I'm talking about it, because it's important. See, racism is a mental illness, folks. Because anytime you can determine somebody's intelligence because of their race, something is wrong with you. Anytime you can determine somebody's intelligence because of their sex, something is wrong with you. You determine somebody's um, kind heart because of their religion or not their religion. Something is wrong. This is tough. This is a battle when you're fighting against racism because you're fighting against the structure, folks. Now, know this, learn this, and understand. See, when people do not care about you, they will miseducate you. They will give you false information or not give you information at all. That's the non-education. They don't value you, thus, they don't value your education. They don't want you to know, thus, what we'll do is all that information that I have at my disposal, I will keep it to myself. I will not share it with you. And because of your age, I really will not share it with you because you're too young or you're too old to even know. And so when we start looking at this thing, miseducation, it doesn't prepare students for the actual conditions of the world. So they leave out of here not knowing. And then they go somewhere and then they're uninformed because they were not educated. That's a problem, folks. And then the whole thing about miseducation, schools that don't value the education, they don't value education. One of the greatest, there's two movies that I like. I like a lot of movies dealing with school. Lean on me and stand in the middle. And when the young man, the, um, the teacher, Jaime, wanted to teach those kids from the East Los Angeles calculus, he was told, you can't teach them. Why? Why not? Because of their biological makeup, people felt that the administrators that they weren't worth teaching. This is important. Anti-racist de uh, democratic education. Education that's challenged. And then we talk about the TR. Truth and Reconciliation Commission, a group of people whose main goal is to investigate human rights violations. Their main goal is to investigate human rights violations. What is a human right? It could be health care. Human right is treating somebody with respect and dignity. You know, don't you have a right to live there? I do. Yeah, you have a right to live Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's important. Truth and Reconciliation Commission, okay? Human rights is very, very important. People have the right to vote. People have a right to live. Okay? That's extremely important. Okay? They'll tell you, and this is code language, you have access to health care. <laughs> That's code language. You know why? I got access to walk across the street. But if I don't have legs, guess what happens? I need some assistance. Access is one thing. Can you afford it is the other thing. Bless you twice. Can you afford it is another thing. So the access is important. But also being able to afford it is important. These are my things right here. Non education and miseducation. Don't prepare. Okay? Doesn't prepare you. 
Then let you go and come teach you. That's a problem. Real problem. The schools that don't value education, that's a problem too. That's a problem. Students take classes, and they sign up for classes, and they see the, the class and then what the, what the criteria is for the class. They should be excited. They should be fired up. They should be ready to rock and roll. OK? We're going to learn this in this class? And when they walk in, that Instructors should have passion about what they teach. This right here, what's that word you use, stuff? Yeah, for me, it begins with a U. The what? What's that word you use that begins with a U? That I always say, unacceptable. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember. This is unacceptable. These two are unacceptable. I Begins with you? No, you said when I uh, for the first time you said what's that word that I always use? Oh, Speaking. oh, oh, yeah. that one. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Wrong class. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, but this that, this this is unacceptable. Unacceptable, man. Education is blood sport. You should be motivated every time you come to class, every day. Every day. Never let anybody steal your joy. She be fired up every single day. Not miseducated. Not non-education, no. I want you to be equipped with everything that you need when you walk out this door. And you should be able to motivate me as well, which you do. All the stuff I get, Texas and, and all that stuff, so it's all good. All right. We're going to go out of order. We're going to go out of order. We're going to deal with every one of these. Okay? We're going to go out of order. So what do we want to take first? All right? All right, we want to take first. Is, why don't you talk to your family? Some of you here. Y'all need to talk to y'all family about approving race relations. Some of you guys in here got prejudiced people in your family. You know who you are. You do. Why are you dating him? Why are you dating her? Why are you associating with him? Why are you associating with her? Let's deal with number two. Avoid stereotypical language. All ethnic groups do or act do this or act like this. They do? Really? So that's exclusively that young lady tell me, I never date another Mexican guy. I said, why? They say, because they beat their women. I said, they do? So they're the only race that beat their women. Okay. So no other race beat their women. No. All right. You say, you can't believe that. Yes, I do. Why? All black guys cheat. They do? Really? So they the only race that cheats? Only girls? Only wives? Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Know thyself. Do you know yourself? Do you really know yourself? Do you really know? It's not when you know yourself. You're trying, you're trying to find yourself. Okay. Number four, teach is teach, but you got to do sometimes, you got to teach. You got to set the tone. And so when you're dealing with issues of, of discrimination, of race, and prejudice, sometimes it's difficult to set that tone. But you got to set it. You know, they always say you take the high road. Sometimes that high road is hard to get to, especially when you're dealing with a fool. It's really hard to deal with. Okay. Number 10, TV, rap, and rock are all joke. This is just a tradition one. All right. Racism in the joke. You got to take it seriously. 
you really have to take this seriously because racism can destroy you. How do you know when you're around a racist? You know. And one thing, you got the overt, you got the covert. Sometimes the covert is more dangerous than the overt. But you know when you're around a racist. And there's a difference between a person that's racist and a person that's prejudiced. A prejudiced person has that negative attitude. That's just the attitude. A racist, they, they, they are about action. Because of your biological makeup would deny you a right to live, would deny you um, adequate health care, would deny you your livelihood, employment. That's what a racist does. A prejudiced person, they don't have that power. But when you start talking about a person that's racist and it's about position, it changes the ball game. That authority prevents you from being you, doing you. Okay. Number five, learn your family tree. And yes, you should. You need to know your family tree. Okay, because there's some people that find out who their parents are later because it's a situation where they might be able to donate organs or something and you find out, oh, that's my father. That's my mother. I thought, I thought she was your sister. Yeah. Number six. Number six, step out of your zone. What's your zone? You only associate with people like you? Yeah, most people do. It's kind of hard. Sometimes you have to start interacting with people who are different than you. Because that's the only way you're going to grow. Don't have a segregationist mentality where you only want to be around people that are just like you. How do you learn? How do you grow? You can't. Unfortunately, a lot of those people who had a segregationist mentality are in positions of power. And that's very, very sad. And the country cannot progress when you have those people in the place. So they can't grow because they can't learn about other people. Number seven, both exercise and citizenship rights. If you exercise your citizenship rights, you are a citizen. You have a right to vote. Take advantage of that. Don't let people prevent you from voting. Eric, you said um, you're, you're a man with dignity. Right. Yeah. Now, we're not of order for many reasons. I think I covered every one, right? No. No, I get it. Which one did I miss? Both. Which one did I miss? Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Just let me wrap a few minutes. I'm going to come down everybody's street in this room. Number eight. And this is the only one up here. Eight, eight, you know what's unique about the number eight? It's the only number that has value that you can keep going on and on. All those other ones, you got to stop. Okay? You got number one, you stop, right? Number two, you stop right here. Number three, number four, five, six. So you got to stop. Seven, you got to stop. But see, when you get to eight, you can start and you keep going on and on, like skating. Eight and skate. Nine, and then that's the ten. Number eight. Right, right is have an introspective. Now, I stay, I always stay number eight, and I do that last because number eight is very powerful to me personally. And I've done number eight. And I think a lot of people in this room might have done number eight and didn't know it, but I'm going to take it to another level. When you start looking at an introspective, what you're doing is you're looking inside yourself. Okay. When you look inside yourself, you look at the mistakes that you made in your life. After you do your introspective, you look at your life in retrospect. 
And what you do is you look at your life in increments. Those increments could be four years, they could be five years, no more than six. Some of you in here have not been on Earth long enough to do a uh, retrospect, look at your life. You gotta age a little bit because you have to experience life. So number, number eight is retrospect. Then what you have to do is you have to take a critical analysis of your family. You take a critical analysis of your family. And after you do that, you take a critical analysis of society. And you do that in order. Now, you do the introspective, the retrospective, critical analysis of your family, and the critical analysis of society. And when you do all those four in order, I hope you're sitting down. I hope you're alone. Because if you are, it's going to blow your mind. And, and you know what's going to happen? All those people that you had respect for 10 years ago, 12 years ago, you're not going to have respect for them anymore. And then you're going to start questioning everything that you've done in your life. Because that's truth telling about you, about your family, and about society. And you will never be able to move forward until you have that. But you have to do it in order. And, and once you come to your conclusion, after that last step of look, taking a critical analysis of society, you would never be the same person. And I shared that with you because I did that. And I was sitting down at home one day. And there are people that I respected. I have no respect for them now. There's things that, that I did, I regret. But that goes back to the introspective from step one. Being honest with yourself. And when you look at your life in retrospect, and you begin to ask yourself, how come this person didn't stand up for me when I was going through that battle? Why weren't they there for me? And, and I'll take it a step further. There's going to be one year in your life, one year, and you know that year, that you're going to ask yourself years later, I'm glad I'm still here. I know what year that is for me. And this real talk. My cousin needed some money. And he called me. And I was, he said, man, I just need like $700. Between four and 700. He said, but you'll have to give me 700. I gave him 650 and I wrote the year on the, on the check. And when he got the check, he looked at the year, he started laughing. Because I wrote it in where you're supposed to like write person's name that you write the check to. But that was to let him know he was there for me. And he listened to me. And he believed in me when a lot of people didn't. This is very, very important for you to move forward in your journey through this life. Okay. Some of you guys in here are not even 25 years old. Okay. You need to do it when you're 30. Y'all gonna make it 30. I'm saying y'all gonna check out. We gotta be here for the duration because we gotta fight this battle. Okay. So don't think I'm not only believing. I don't know, Professor Gold, this don't look too good, promising. No, you're going to be here because we got to win this. We can't let these jokers win, Jack. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You can't check out on me now because, see, if you check out on me, I miss all those arguments and I can't fuss at you. And you can't fuss at me. And I can't send you no text messages early in the morning. You can't leave. Okay. This issue of race is a battle. And many people think that they, this can't happen to them because they are not a part of a certain group. And I always ask this question. Drew, do you have a million dollars in the bank? Vanessa, you got a million dollars in the bank? Yes, sir. 
What about you, Miss Clark? You got a million dollars in the bank? Yes. Jake, what about you? E, you got a million dollars in the bank? You wouldn't be here if you could. Miss Miller, you got a million dollars in the bank? Oh, yes. Does anybody in this class have a million dollars in the bank? No talk. None of y'all in here. So you know what that means? Everybody in here is um, <laughs> going through this battle together. Everybody. Regardless of your color, regardless of your gender, regardless of your race, religion, everybody's going through this battle. Okay. We have to continue fighting this battle. Because it's tough. Okay. If we don't fight, we're going to perish as fools. So just remember that. Okay. Thank you.